Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about humor in video games. But before I do, I want to point out, this is my last shirt. <laughs> You've seen every shirt I own, including shirts that were boxed up in the garage for a decade or two or four. This is it. I'm going to start repeating shirts after this. It's a thing. Didn't think it would be a thing, but it was a thing. That thing is over. Okay, let's talk about humor in games. I think it's pretty obvious, if you've played a lot of my games, that I try to put humor in all of them. Some of them are obviously humorous. I mean, Outer Worlds wore its humor on its sleeve. Fallout was always described as a darkly humorous post-apocalyptic game. But if you look hard, you'll see my humor in all my games. For example, in Temple, which was pretty straightforward, pretty, you know, by the books, d and game. The humor comes up in a lot of the characters I wrote. Uh, I wrote Fruella, who was the older sister who hadn't been married off yet in the village of Hamlet, despite her dowry. If you marry her... Wow, does she have things to say about you, about places you take her to. She hates everything and everywhere and everyone. But I also slid it into Vampire, and I told you I only worked on it for the last year. So I had nothing to do with, like, Deb of the Night and some of the radio stuff, which was hilarious. My stuff occurred in the bosses that I did. So if you played the shark-headed boss in the frozen fish warehouse, which was an instance because I decided he was going to throw fish at you, which meant all those fish on all those shelves had to be physics objects. And let's just say that the source engine at the time, running on computers at the time, was very unhappy when you said, I want 100 physics objects right in the same location. In fact, starting that level, sometimes you can hear a little noise as all those physics objects come to a rest on the shelves. And of course, you know, the shark boss would pick them up and throw them at you. But I also did it with the man bat, the final boss, the what the sheriff turned into. When he would dive down to pick up objects, I originally just put a bunch of objects down there for him to pick up, but eventually I made a list of things. And they were things like cars and signs and trucks. Uh, but then I eventually like started having him throw people at you and it was funny to make them iconic people. So he threw police officers and I think prostitutes, um, they would, they would still be alive too when he threw them, um, because they would take damage when they hit you and frequently they would die. I believe there was one time, I think I would automatically kill them because otherwise I think there was a point where the police officer would get tossed into you take damage, shrug it off, and stand up, and start shooting the man bat. Which I thought was funny, but I think we took that out. I think I made it so when they hit you, they died. So what do I want to say about humor, other than I like to use it a lot? Humor in games is hard to do. A lot of people think it's easy. They're wrong. Most games don't try it, and most games shouldn't. Not every game needs to be funny. Um, it is just a hard technique to put into a game, especially to put into a game in a way that is good for that game's theme. That's why the humor in Fallout is very different than the humor in Outer Worlds, very different than the humor in Temple, and very different than the humor in Vampire, because those are different games. In that sense, humor is also dangerous to put in, because there's a lot of different humor you can try, and some of it, a lot of it, is wrong for your game. But a lot of it is also stuff that will set off some people who are playing your game. I mean, you don't want to offend anybody. Although there are some people who will be offended by almost anything. So humorous is dangerous in that respect. Humorous, humor is also dangerous in the sense that what's funny to some people isn't funny to others. And they will get upset that they're not getting the joke or you're, you're being not funny or... It, I tried to follow the same rule about humor that 
way back in Fallout, I imposed on making mentions of cultural references. And specifically, if it's put in there and the people don't get it, they shouldn't even notice it was there. So that way they don't feel excluded. And that's really good with humor because humor is a really easy way for people to feel excluded. They know a joke is being told and they don't get it. I know I mentioned in Fallout that one of the perks you could buy was the Slayer. And it was if you got your unarmed really high, you could buy this perk that there was a chance when you punch someone, you just had a chance of killing them outright. That makes sense. The name Slayer makes sense for that perk. But for people who watched Buffy the Vampire Hunter, they knew we were making a reference and they were like, hee hee, I'm the Slayer. Similarly, when we put in the limited edition Red Rider BB gun or the Red Rider BB gun at all, people knew we were making, well, we were making a reference to the movie A Christmas Story. If you didn't get that reference, if you didn't get that cultural reference, it was just a BB gun called Red Rider. Okay, that makes whatever. But either Bob, the guy who sold it to you, or he didn't sell it to you, you found it in his trailer. I think in any of this dialogue or in the description of the limited edition Red Rider BB gun, it says something like, be careful or you'll shoot your eye out, kid. To someone who's seen A Christmas Story, that's funny. But if you haven't seen Christmas Story, it just sounds like good advice. Be careful because this the whole point of the limited edition is it does extra damage and it's easier to hit people in the eye. That's what it does. If you've never seen the movie, it's still a good weapon, and that's still good advice. If you've seen the movie, it's funny. That's the humor I like. It doesn't exclude anybody, but if you get it, it's funny on a different level that's not important to experience. But that's not the only reason to put in humor, is to occasionally have a ha-ha time. I've always said that pacing in games is really important in the sense that it should be fast-paced in some times, slow-paced in others. Humor is the same way. It should be funny in some points and then dark and serious in others. And that's because, like everything in life, you want ups and downs. You don't want monotony. You don't want flatness. And humor helps games have that up and down. There was something I used to say at Carbine a lot when people were like, well, we're having a lot of fun putting in bosses. We should do all bosses. And they'd even point to Shadows of the Colossus as an example. And I'm like, but Shadows of the Colossus has a lot of downtime between bosses where you get on your horse and you ride through a countryside for a long time looking at the landscape, maybe fighting a couple, I guess, trash mobs is what they would be called now. So I used to say people would rather ride a roller coaster that goes up and down than a monorail. Doesn't matter how high the monorail is, it's still a monorail. Humor is like that. Humor provides that pacing. Humor is really good as a relief valve. This was really important in a game like Fallout because you would see some horrific stuff. I mean, we put in death animations that were horrific. People's limbs being blown off. Blood, bones exposed. Adding humor to that game lets you laugh after too much pent-up tension occurred. And as Leonard used to like to remind me, humor makes the dark parts even darker. And I think that's something that's good to remember, that you can't have darkness without any light. You can't have light areas without dark areas. You need that contrast. Whether you're making storyline, dialogue, item descriptions, found lore, having some humor in a game helps provide relief to the player, make the dark parts of the game seem darker in contrast, and also makes a game fun. And I'm a big proponent of making a game fun. Like I said, I'm over, I'm, I propose making a game fun before making it balanced, and that's just important to me. 
Best way I can tell you of distinguishing humor is that the biggest difference I saw between the original Fallout game and the original Wasteland game was the humor. I think there was more humor. There was some humor in, in Wasteland. I think there was more in Fallout. That Delta is a big part of the difference between those games. And I think that if you enjoyed those both of those games, which I think you should, that's a good way of looking at it and going, that's one difference along many axes of difference that we did with Fallout. That was hard to put in. Dumb dialogue helped a great deal. It's a big part of what makes Arcanum funny is the dumb dialogue. But I don't think you should build an entire game around dumb dialogue. And I've never built an entire game just around humor. But I think it's really important. I just wanted to do a video on it to remind people it's hard. It's kind of dangerous. And a lot of people won't get it. So make sure you add humor in a way that doesn't feel exclusionary to your audience. And I think that's everything I have to say. Sorry this wasn't a funny video. Uh... It's funny, talking about humor isn't humorous. I think I saw a comedian say that once. It's why comedy schools aren't funny. And people who go to comedy schools tend not to end up as good comedians. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that.